Good morning and welcome to our kitchen. I have a special day today. This is program number one, 307. And uh, I am uh, greeting and saying hello to a gentleman that has been with us two times before, uh, Frank LaRagione. I call him the fundraising chef of Berkshire County even, um, because not only he has a full-time job at General Dynamics, his downtimes, uh, pleasure he gets out of doing uh, suppers and what are for fundraisers, including our own church, First Baptist. He has the help of his family. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably couldn't do it without them um, when they put on the dinners. And uh, he wanted to come do another show. Uh, I guess he likes us here. Uh, we get a lot of laughs. and. Uh, I'm so happy to have you Thank with you. us on this uh, early spring day in March, just before Easter. So, uh, Frank, what are you going to make today? Uh, two things. One, uh, traditional hot cross buns. Uh, usually those are, at least in my family uh, and in a lot of the Italian areas, that was a staple during the Lenten season and um, for Easter. And the other is a spinach and artichoke pasta, one pot or one skillet dish that uh, is straightforward to make and um, uh, quick and easy uh, for families, two or three people, whatever at this point. Okay. So that's what we're going to make. Okay. And uh, yes, it's a joy to be back. It's been a lot of fun. I'm sure we'll have a lot of laughs. We. Uh, Fought the snow coming here, uphill both ways, yep. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are um, ready to go. Ready to go. Okay. All right. Um, the hot cross buns, I like using a scale for all of my baking, uh, mainly because now your product is repeatable. Uh, I learned that at a cooking class years ago that you know when you measure out a cup of flour, a cup of sugar, whatever, the weight will vary um, cup to cup to cup. Yeah. Even though it's just measured the right way, yeah, the right. weight, everything will, will vary and that'll give you your variation in bread or anything that you're baking. When you're baking, you can't fool around. That's right. Yep. You, when you're baking, you need to make sure you follow the recipe. Yep. And, what I'll, and I will say just the opposite when we do the one skillet because cooking is to taste. Yes. Baking is to recipe. You're <laughs> it's right. really straightforward. Yep. And um, what I've done in all, just about all of my recipes, I take and type up what the amount of grams are, and that way I just weigh it all out and off I go. Yep. So with the hot crust buns, we're going to start with um, our flour. And I, I like these scales because you kind of just turn them on. You can put your bowl right on there and zero it out, and you can just pour in the amount. This here happens to be 512, which I know is a weird number, but <laughs> um, <laughs> grams of flour. And thank you. Yep. Then you take your 48 grams of sugar. Again, nice thing is you just zero the scale back out again and just start pouring it in. Make sure I follow the directions. Our yeast. I don't buy the individual packages. I just get the one pound box. Cheaper. Okay, a little cheaper, and for me, it just lasts. It lasts about a year in the refrigerator, yeah. and um, not for me because we go through probably three of these a year. So okay, it's uh, 
a little bit and 13 now when you come home after a hard day at hard day at work uh, does Lynn have the supper already for you lots of times she does most of the time yeah um, because sometimes it's um, we cook on weekends and we do leftovers during the week. Okay. <laughs> a lot of people do that. Is the easiest way to describe it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those go together. Dough hook. Mm -hmm. I myself do not do that. Uh, but. What, dough hook or? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I told you we were going to have to <laughs> joke around. Uh, cook on the weekends and have it all. No. <laughs> I've never gotten into that. So the other thing that this recipe calls for is a little bit of yeast, dough, and water mixed together night before. Okay. Night so you just let it sit for 8 to 12 hours, whatever you like. You put it in and kind of ferments a little bit, gives it a little different taste. Uh -huh. That goes in. Wow. Um, and then we will start that mixing. There it works. And then we will, again, Mixing cup, but I just put it right on the scale. Yeah. Zero it out. Recipe calls for milk. Uh, there is a note here on this. I prefer buttermilk with this recipe. Okay. Just to let, again, a little bit different flavor. Um, 358 grams. I make my own pa pancakes on the weekend and uh, I finally, I won't keep buttermilk on hand because I don't use it up, but I just put the vinegar in the regular milk and make the soured yep. milk. There we go. You could give me the, can I, are you all done with that? Yeah. So you can. Thank you. Yep. A little bit of orange oil again just to give it a little flavor not a lot but you don't have to weigh that that's taste just to taste vanilla same thing um, this is about 13 grams so maybe a tablespoon maybe a little bit more um, can have that slowly just I pour it in while the mixer is doing its thing <laughs> mine usually doesn't go up and down <laughs> It's alive. Yeah. And you don't want to over mix it. You just want it to like it is till it comes through. Because sometimes it makes the dough tougher. It doesn't. It does. It does. It. You over mix the dough, and yes, it'll get very. Um, it'll activate more of the gluten yeah. that's in there. Um, oops. Butter. I like to cut it up into chunks just so you don't have one big piece floating around inside the mix mixer. Yep.
And this will give it a, a little bit of a uh, shine to sure. the dough. Do you like to make yeast? I do. Recipes? I do. I've actually taken a couple of classes up at um, King Arthur. Okay. Up yep. in upstate Vermont, mm -hmm. and I've gone to their baking school and done bre did yeast breads and what have you there. A lot of fun. A lot of fun to learn, and um, I'll play around. Um, a name from the past, Jean Johnson. Yes. Years ago, she uh, was wanted one of my recipes, and I go, I just, I don't give my recipes out. <laughs> and uh, she goes, but I really, really want them, you know, my kids really like your, um, pot, oh, no, which one she want? Uh, the lo chocolate lava cakes that I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, what do you have for trade? She goes, what I have, have for trade? <laughs> uh, my grandmother's okay. uh, bread recipe. Okay. So I'm thinking... Jean was probably in her 80s at that point in time, and if I start thinking back of it was her grandmother, yeah. that's going back a long time with mm -hmm. the recipe. Yeah. But it's a it, great recipe. It uses three or four different types of flour between yeast, for, between regular flour, wheat, uh, some rye, and some corn meal in there, uh -huh. and it makes a really neat bread. But mm -hmm. what I've also done is taken that same recipe and I'll go, gee, I only have rye, I don't have wheat, I'll make it with rye. I'll just mix it up, and as long as you stay with the quantities as far as the okay. weight and stuff okay. for any bread, okay, you're fine. Um, how, I forgot. How many loaves of Irish soda bread did you make for the um, corned beef meal? For the corned beef, we did 86. 86. 86 loaves of soda bread. Wow. Yep. Because we need about 25 for or so the for the dinner, yep. and uh, we sell the rest yep. to help, again, make some money from the church. Yep. Pre-orders. Yeah, yep. pre-orders only. Definitely, yeah. Uh, but this is candied ginger. Mm -hmm. You can see I've cut up a little bit, but basically all I do is take it, cut it up into small pieces, and uh, so you don't get a big hunk of ginger when you bite in. Yeah. But... Now, did, does uh, Lynn help you make the bread and all that? Oh, yeah. all at home? No, no, I do all the bread up at the church. Sure. And uh, Ruth, Nick, Lynn, we all, we do, uh, what is it, three triple batches at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, triple batch makes anywhere from seven or eight loaves. Yeah. So we end up doing like nine of those and then one extra mm -hmm. to get us there. So it... Uh, we're there a while. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes. We are there a while. It's uh, it's tiring to cook. Like it this. is. It is. Can I hand you that? Thank you. So now it's just really the raisins and the candied ginger. Um, And the variation that you can do on this is, you don't like ginger, replace it with raisins. You can do just the golden raisins like um, I like, but you can do the mixed, large and small, you could, whatever type of raisins or currant that you like. Yep. Just stick to the recipe from a weight point of view yep. and you're fine. Raisins, 192. There we go. And I just let the uh, mixer mix them in. And there's no real, for this, 
as long as the cur the raisins and the ginger kind of get mixed in, you're fine. Yeah. And you just take this out. Spin. I guess if I didn't spin it, we would have had dough all over the place. <laughs> We like to get confectionery sugar uh, dessert recipes around here. <laughs> My partner loves to just be messy. Yep. <laughs> and you can see here how it's all mixed in. Good to go. And uh, what I do is I just take... Another pan, a little, you can use butter, you can use a cooking spray, whatever you would like just to coat the pan so they don't stick. And I just like to take a good pinch, kind of make it into a ball, mm -hmm. and I put 12 of them in a pan. Yep. You want them bigger, make them bigger. You want them smaller, make, make them, them smaller. The only thing is if you make them bigger or smaller, you have to watch how much time it takes to cook them. Yep. Um, so we can mix all the, or do these up, or I can put my pan in the oven and show you as is. Yeah, Either way. Well, uh, well, we'll uh, show the ones you've already done. Okay. And we'll put those in the oven, and uh, then we'll break, and uh, you can... Yes, sorry. Yes, they have to rise about two hours. Um, and yep. you can do one or two risings if you like. Yep. Um, some people like to do two. The recipe I have here says two, uh, where you just leave it in the bowl, let it rise up, double in size, hour, hour and a half. Roll them out like this, and then let them rise back up another hour. Okay, so hour, you first of all, you let them rise in the mixing in, bowl Yep. once. And then you can do your balls, yep. and uh, then you cover the and let it rise in the baking pan. Yep. I mean, sometimes if I'm in a rush, because it's a Sunday morning and I didn't want to get them done for uh, noontime, I just pull them right out like this, roll them, okay. and um, With let them rise just once. Once. And uh, they work out just fine. Yep. In the years of me making meatballs, I can kind of figure out yes. how I do these. <laughs> <laughs> Is it your, was it your grandmother's recipe for meatballs? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, sort of. Sort it's of. just worked out over the years of, of you know. Your, your, uh, put your... Uh, put my twist on twist it. Twist on it. Yeah. Yeah. And this will be very sticky. Um, as you can see, it's kind of sticking to my hands. The recipe says you can put it on a floured yeah. uh, surface to go. I kind of like it a little with a little sticky and not adding extra flour into the That's recipe. True. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and not that it does a whole lot. It's just it's nicer to be able to. Um, I don't know. I just like it better. Oh. Whatever floats, floats your boat. That's right. <laughs> Just roll them out. Nice about the 9 by 13 pan is 12 fit nicely in there. And there, I don't think there's anything left in the bowl. There's not. No, you know just exactly. Exactly how to do it. How <laughs> much to it each one. That's right. And you saw me properly measure them all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so all right. we'll put that aside and let it 
rise or what do you want to do and yep. you can show us what you've already done. Did you They're all set to be put into the oven. I uh, just need to... Um, brush them with something? Brush them, yes. Yeah. So you can see here, they will rise, or they will puff up even more once they're baked. Um, With an egg wash. And just an egg wash. Do you need a brush? Yes, please. I hope. If not, I can improvise. I hope. There you go. Ah, there you go. Perfect. So I just give the egg a little mix. Doesn't have to be super. And I just kind of brush the tops, give them a little brown color or brown, darker brown color, I should say. Yeah. You can, um, when they're rising, you can use a wet cloth. You can use just saran wrap, whatever you like. It's just nice to have them in a warmer place in your kitchen or wherever you're making them. Yes, definitely. So they rise a little bit better. Yep. Um, you know, if it's a cool day or a cool kitchen, um, it will take longer for them to rise up. Yep. Okay, ready to pop in the oven. And how long? And about, let's do about 25 minutes. Okay. So our hot cross buns are done. Popped them right out of the oven. You can see here, nice and brown. You look for, I look at the tops, but I also look at the sides just to make sure around the edges that I see that nice golden color. And then we just um, kind of help them out a little bit, pop them out. To let them cool. And after they've cooled, and you can see it's flaky all the way along the sides there. Once they've cooled, we'll make up a uh, powdered sugar and milk and put a little plus sign or cross, yep. essentially hot cross buns, um, along the top there to give them like, like we all need a little more sugar. <laughs> Woo. Good catch, Frank. Don't pick. Don't grab that pan. <laughs> ah. All right. On to the next. So this is a spinach artichoke um, and pasta dish. Very, very simple to make. Again, you can, if you like, don't like artichokes, put a little more spinach in it. If you don't like spinach, Add whatever other leafy thing you want or don't even put spinach in it and just you can even if you want put um, meat in it. This is total uh, no meat dish. Uh, it's not vegan because I do use cheese in it. Um, but you can um, add chicken, a little bit of ham, whatever you like. Okay. Uh, you know, again, to taste mm -hmm. whatever you would like to do. So I just yep. usually start with... A little bit of olive oil in the pan, two or three tablespoons. Now poor Frank is cooking on an electric stove with this, so we have to, because he's used to gas, and most chefs want gas anyways, don't they? 
it's easier to control yep. because you can, you know, gas, I can put, the, put it on the side, put it wherever, um, lower it to real, real small, uh, yep. low once it's at temperature. Yep. We're here with electric, it just take, it, it gets there. You can do it. It's, I've cooked on electric before. It's just um, when you go to take it off or you, if you want to leave it there, I should say, it takes a little bit to cool for it uh, the burner to yeah. stop cooking. That's yeah. all. Did you want it on? Um, actually, yes. Why don't we kick it on? So with this, I'm just taking two or three. I usually do myself three or four whole cloves of garlic, and um, I just cut them up. Again, if you want to see the garlic in the dish and really get bite into a piece of garlic, keep them slice. big, slice them slice. thicker. If you want them to disappear, just cut them real small and they will blend into your dish and you'll never know that the whole garlic is there. Thought I was gonna fight with a jar to get it open. I'm fighting with the <laughs> garlic. I am afraid I buy the jar of minced garlic already done. I do too. We have a jar of it in our refrigerator. Oh, good, good. Yep. Um, it's just for some recipes, I like that fresh garlic yeah. flavor. Okay. Because um, what you will see here in a second is I like leaving I just slice it and leave it yeah fairly large I we can get a laugh out of this but I still don't know why two people have to have garlic in a meal too close mm. and there's you don't notice the aroma afterwards but one person has it the meal and the other person knows exactly they've had garlic yep <laughs> so I just take the garlic toss it in the pan it starts you can actually put that on closer to high close to high okay yes we can edit out if it takes a little while so <laughs> And the same thing with the onions. You like them thick, cut them thick. You want them thin and uh, fairly small. I usually just onion this side. You can use shallots, either or. Um, I was at the supermarket last night and could only find onions to the last minute. So, but it doesn't really take a lot and all I do is quarter them up, whoops. Spray them all over the kitchen. Yeah, that's that's good. We do that too. And uh, off we go. Uh, we'll make it oniony. Come on. It's. I can hear it starting. <laughs> What I usually do on the show is uh, I'll start a saute thing with vegetables or whatever, and then I turn it over to Gordy to start to do her dessert because we're not going to sit here, uh, uh, stand there and watch. Watch it cook? Watch it cook. Yep. All right, that's probably enough onion. So the recipe will call for salt. I don't put any salt in this only because I have three different types of cheeses going in and that's usually enough from a you know salt the, the taste point of view. Yeah. Um, but if you want to add more salt, pepper, etc., totally up to you. You can go oh. forward to do that. What do you like to um, there's probably also the spoon would there's work. There's uh, wood ones in the back of you. I prefer wood, actually. Yeah, okay. There you that's go. just me. Well, no, that's why we have every different thing here. 
So basically you just cook this up till the onions are translucent. You can take it if you want. Again, you want them to brown a little bit, you can do that too. They become a little sweeter at that point in time. But while that's going, I just use standard 14 ounce can of artichoke hearts. Okay. Uh, drain it. Have them ready, about 10 ounces. And again, the recipe calls for about 10. It's however how much ever spinach. I usually get the uh, either the nine ounce or um, twelve ounce frozen spinach package. Okay. Let it defrost. Squeeze, squeeze all the water it, yeah. out of it, yeah. and off you go. can see it's starting to brown up a little bit. The garlic is starting to brown up. That oil that's down in there is getting a lot of flavor in it from that. And off you go. You just sit there, watch it go for a little bit. And then all I do, it's starting to look pretty good. I take the spinach, mix that in. And again, you can chop the spinach up if you like. Same thing with the artichoke hearts. If you don't want the whole artichoke hearts, you can cut those up to whatever size pieces you like also. Let them sit for a few minutes. Just getting the milk ready. It's two cups of milk. Now you're going to be cooking the pasta in the... Cooking it. I'm right, going to put right dry in pasta it. right in. Yeah. Yep. Which is not something I've never thought about doing, though my son did make uh, goulash sometime. And you didn't cook the pasta ahead of time. Well, you don't have to. You don't. Nope. The nice part about it is with this and the milk, and the seasoning that is in there, the pasta just absorb uh -huh. all of that. So I just take the milk, pour two cups of milk in, and what I then do is, calls for some water, but what I like to do is just take the water, stick it to the side. When I pour my pasta in, I just add a little bit of water as I go just sure. to you know, this is going to absorb a lot of the liquid, and you can make it as liquidy as you would like. Yep. You just take the pasta. That was half a pound, by the way. And you just want to make sure this is going to go about 10, 12 minutes. A little bit longer than what you would normally do boil your pasta at, which is around eight minutes or so. Yeah. I um, like to make sure that it does completely get covered. And this calls for, I'll read it here, two to three ounces of the Parmesan cheese. Again, to taste. What I like to do is just kind of go along the top of it Put a nice amount in, stir that in, and really that's where a lot of your saltiness will come from the Parmesan cheese versus putting your own in. And Half a package of cream cheese. Okay. There's the half. And again, I just like to 
put it into a couple of pieces and be able to go. And now we just mix that in. Not spill like I just did. <laughs> you, you, well, you did fill the fry pan up. Yep. Got to expect a little overflow. Or a lot of overflow. <laughs> I won't feel so bad when I <laughs> don't. I mean, the impressive part is if you're in your big gas you know, kitchen, t uh, restaurant type kitchen, you get flames all over the place when you do that. <laughs> and it's really cool to be able to see, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> They're really cooking there. Yeah. That's right. Uh -huh. And just make sure that you don't have chunks of cheese uh, hanging yeah. out in there. Sure. And just, um, now it's just letting it simmer for, like I said, about 10 minutes, not even. What I will do is just, you know, you can time it or like I do when I'm cooking my pasta at home. I just look, find one, pull it out, see how it tastes or, uh, you know, how soft it is, hard it is. Yeah, how well done. How well done do you want it? And yeah. off you go. There. So um, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. And you talked about uh, putting it under the broiler when it, this is done. And with put that. mozzarella cheese all the way around the top of it. And that's when you slide it into the broiler and you get let that mozzarella nice mm -hmm. bubbly and a little bit of brown and it's ready to go. Okay, so we will break while this uh, is cooking and uh, might be back at our table or we'll, we'll s watch him put it in the broiler under the when it's ready okay okay all right so the dish is ready to go as far as the skillet is you know the one pot skillet what I do now is just take and take some mozzarella cheese right over the top put a little extra on just to, again it's to taste or what however you would like I always add more cheese that's right and I just cover, try to get it evenly spread around. And I just slide it in the broiler. And it'll be there for a couple of minutes and we'd be ready to go. Me so more. while that's in there, what I do is I just take, make a little icing in a Ziploc storage bag. Just nip the end and squeeze out a little bit and just make a little cross. These are still a little warm, so it's melting a little bit, but that's okay. Icing is just powdered sugar, milk, and I put a little bit of uh, orange oil in for a little bit more flavoring. You can use a frosting bag. You really can use whatever you like. I just find it easier to use a plastic bag, Ziploc bag. You can throw it away. And then you throw it away, exactly. You just yep. throw it away afterwards. You don't have to worry about trying to clean it all up, put a special tip on it, any of that. It's You can make it as thick or as thin as you want because yep. It all depends on how thick of a hole <laughs> you cut in the, back, <laughs> the side of the bag <laughs> and how cool the buns are. Yeah. And again, if you don't like 
frosting or this type of sugar frosting they taste good just plain also all right and those are beautiful this has another minute to go okay well I think uh, we will break and when we come back we'll be at our table with our finished products sounds good yep welcome back to our table we've had a fun time today with my uh, guest that I've had before, uh, Frank LaRagione, who uh, is not a restaurant chef, but he's a chef in Berkshire County. Uh, if you've gone to uh, fundraisers at schools, at churches, at Grange, uh, you're very likely to find that Frank, Frank is the, the uh, man that uh, put the meal on. So I asked him to come back again, and he's very willing. Uh, and he's decided it's, this show is being taped near Easter. And uh, he decided to make some hot cross buns. I'm going to turn it over to Frank, of course, and let him tell you uh, what the two recipes were that uh, uh, he made for us today. OK. Um, the hot cross buns you see here, I mean, it, it is a basic, if you follow the recipe, um, sweet bread type recipe. Uh, the only thing that if you do take a look at the, uh, the recipe that I provided, um, it is in grams. It is all weighed out. It is not a cup of this, a half cup of that, that sort of thing. It's, you know, 500 grams of this, 200 grams of that, uh, as far as flour, sugar, that sort of thing. You have to prepare o the night before to do a little bit of a, uh, they call it pate fermente, I believe it is, um, to just give it a little bit extra flavoring or different flavoring for the hot cross buns. Uh, and they are more from my family and um, what I've seen, you see them in supermarket, hot cross buns are a Easter type mm -hmm. roll, breakfast roll, dessert roll, whatever you would like or with your meals. Uh, the second dish is a easy, cheese, artichoke, spinach, and pasta dish. Uh, it's a one pot dish. Um, and it's basically, you start, like I did, cutting things up, throwing it into the frying pan, getting it all sauteed up, putting your pasta in, it cooks, and uh, then you just finish it off in the broiler with uh, melting the cheese that you see here on top. So um, at this point, those are the two things I've prepared for today and uh, we can enjoy. Thank you, Frank, very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and I hope you'll come back again. Oh, sure, <laughs> sure. If you'd like any of these recipes, this is show number 307. You can send a stamped address, self-addressed self stamped envelope to Dalton Community Television, 151 Park Avenue, Dalton, Mass, 01226. And that's all from us today, and uh, have a good day, and. Happy Easter. Thank you. Okay. Party's over. <laughs>